y'all before we get into this video i want to show y'all the products i'm using first we have this bar of rose scented dove soap and it smells so amazing and it's also great for sensitive skin so i highly recommend it after that y'all we have this bar of antibacterial soap which i feel like is super underrated but i'll go into detail about later i recommend the brand zest and dial for these after that y'all we have this tree hut scrub which is amazing for exfoliating and after that i'm going to show y'all this shaving oil which is amazing and it smells great but if you don't like shaving oils eos has an amazing shave shaving cream and last is this amazing fall scent that i want to put y'all on from bath and body works let's get straight into the video for my simple everything shower routine i start off with an antibacterial soap and i recommend the brands dial and zest for antibacterial bar soaps but i feel like these are so underrated because they get all the bacteria and dirt off your body and this is so important because not only is it ensuring that you're clean but when you have scents that smell really good or you have soaps that smell really good they won't last as long as you don't have a clean surface you also don't want to shave or exfoliate and put all this time into using all these other products when you, your skin and your body is not already clean so start off with an antibacterial soap because it is definitely going to get the job done so once you get done with your antibacterial soap, y'all, I recommend starting exfoliating if you're going to shave. This is the process I use. I make sure my skin is clean and then I exfoliate. Exfoliation is so important because it gets all the dead skin off. You know, the antibacterial soap is going to get all the dirt off. But exfoliating gets all the dead skin off, especially if you shave because razor bumps are caused when hair is trapped under the dead skin and this is why it's so important to exfoliate so once i get done exfoliating i go in with my shaving gel if you don't like shaving gels i recommend shaving cream and if you don't have a shaving gel or the shaving cream just go in with an unscented soap and you can use that as a base as well so i go i shave down some people say shave against the grain i'm not really 100 percent sure what that means i just shave down y'all it, it always works for me so yeah, for a closer shave though, I'll go in again. So I'll get some more shaving gel, shaving oil, and just go in again. But make sure that you're exfoliating before and after you shave. Not right after, but like exfoliate, shave, and then maybe like a few days after exfoliate. Just continue to exfoliate and put it into your shower routine because that helps prevent razor bumps. So once I get done with that. I'm gonna go in with a sensitive soap, which you guys will see in a second. I went in with the Rose Liquid Dove Soap. I was kind of going for a rose kind of scent today. The reason I didn't use the fall scent that I showed you guys in the beginning was because once I get done shaving, I really don't like using soaps that are too strong. Because when you use a scent that is too strong, it can agitate your skin, cause irritation, and it can cause your skin to be red, it can cause bumps to form, and you don't want that. So I'll use a lightly scented soap that still smells good, but it's gentle, and this is why I'm so big on Dove products, because they're extremely sensitive, yet they work really, really well. So yeah, y'all, I just wanna go with that sensitive soap and that's pretty much it for my simple everything shower routine and next y'all after this we're going to go into oral and skincare but facial wise i'm going to talk about dermal cleaning and all that stuff because i do do that in this video and show y'all how to do it as well thank you guys for tuning into this video don't forget to like and subscribe uh, on to skincare. So y'all know I've been a very big skincare fanatic recently. I've been really big on trying to clear my skin. But before we go into skincare, we're going to, we're going to go into oral care actually. So my biggest thing with oral care, y'all, is make sure that you rinse your mouth out before you start brushing your teeth. Rinse your mouth out with warm water before you brush your teeth. It makes a big difference. I don't know the science behind it, but it literally causes the mint smell in your mouth to last longer when you do that i don't know why also brush your tongue please brush your tongue your tongue holds the most bacteria in your mouth so please make sure that you're brushing your tongue and you're doing it well i also like to exfoliate my lips with like sugar scrubs but sometimes i'll just brush my lips too and yeah y'all just my biggest thing is use hot water when you brush your teeth and go in with a mouthwash afterwards i definitely recommend their breath this one that I had which I actually just finished in this video as y'all just saw I didn't really like the flavor of it but the light blue bottle I really recommend so on to skincare because I'm derma planning in this video I'm going to go in with an exfoliator you want to exfoliate your face because just like on your body you want to make sure that all the dead skin is off before you remove hair from any part of your body so i'm just going in with this exfoliator i don't really like this exfoliator that much but for the most part it works well 
So I'm not going to say that I recommend it because honestly it's not my favorite and I don't really feel like I found an exfoliator for my face that I actually like. But for the most part it gets the job done. So once I get done exfoliating my face, I'm going to go in with aloe vera as like I guess you could say like a base or like a gel. And I'm just going to put a light layer on. And then after that, once you get your light layer on, you're going to take an eyebrow razor. Oh, make sure you have a paper towel too, so that you have something to put the hair on. But get an eyebrow razor. Please be very careful with this part. You're going to lift your skin and hold your face tight so that you don't cut yourself. And you're just going to go in a downward motion and remove all the peach fuzz and hair from your face. I really like dermaplaning because not only has, has it made my skin softer, it also, I'm less prone to breakouts when I dermaplane and my makeup goes on a lot smoother when I dermaplane. So I've been dermaplaning maybe for like a few months and I've definitely been seeing results. My skin has cleared up a lot more. My acne has been less extreme and I really like it. But please be careful when you dermaplane and if you are having breakouts in that moment, please do not dermaplane because it can cause infection. So once you get done dermaplaning, Go on with your facial cleanser. Y'all know I'm a big advocate for Murad. I love some Murad. So I'm just gonna go on with Murad and wash my face with that. And I don't know if y'all can tell, but I feel like this suds up better like after I dermaplane. Like y'all see like the product goes on smoother and better when off that dead skin and peach fuzz or whatever you wanna call it removed from your face. And even if you can't see it, you do have hair on your face. So make sure that if you do dermaplane, you're getting it all off. Dermaplaning is not necessarily important for clear skin, but it has definitely helped me along the way as I've been going on my skincare journey. So after that, y'all, I just go in with a light moisturizer because I do have oily skin and I am prone to blackheads because I have oily skin. So I just go in with a light moisturizer, but everybody's skin type is different. So if you have dry skin, go on with a heavier moisturizer after you get done. But whatever you feel is best for your skin, that's what you do. I always recommend to research the products with your skin type before you start applying things to your skin because over time you will see results if you do use the right products. And that is pretty much it for this routine. Um, I put Vaseline on because you know your girl hates to have dry lips. I don't like dry lips. And that's pretty much it. Hey y'all, so I wanted to get on here and talk to y'all even though I just showed y'all my shower routine and like me dermaplaning and all that stuff. I actually wanted to get on here and sit down and talk to y'all because I feel like a lot of times people have the right products and they're just using it wrong or they genuinely don't know. Also, don't mind my broken nail, y'all. I'm gonna get it fixed. So I went on Instagram because y'all know I always like to get feedback from y'all and I asked y'all like some feminine hygiene questions that y'all wanted me to answer or just tips and stuff that y'all wanted me to speak on in this video. And the main things that you guys talked about were um, shaving questions and long lasting scents. So the first question is, how do I prevent razor bumps? So my biggest... Um, my biggest like recommendation is exfoliation. A lot of people don't know this. Razor bumps are created when the hair follicle is trying to grow back and it's trapped under dead skin and a bump forms. So make sure you exfoliate. That's why it's so important to exfoliate before you shave and then continuously after. I'm not going to say exfoliate every day because that's a bit harsh on your skin and you can actually like pull the moisture out of your skin by exfoliating every single day. So I want to say exfoliate every single day, but maybe every other other day, you know, just make a routine to make sure you exfoliate and that helps prevent razor bumps. Okay. Another thing I want to talk about in this video, y'all, as a feminine shower routine, hygiene routine, is your pH balance. For starters, please stop going on TikTok and expecting the best and most truthful results. TikTok shop is now a big thing and people are on there trying to profit and promote their business. So they're going to tell you everything. Sticking a yoni bar in your intimate parts is not going to balance your pH. It's going to throw it off. Miss Girl is a self-cleaning organ, okay? So imagine sticking something up an internal organ and expecting it to function properly. It's not going to. So if something is extremely, 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 extremely wrong, it is perfectly fine with doing your research. But please keep in mind that TikTok is not your best friend when it comes to this stuff. People are trying to promote and sell and profit. So I'm going to give you all some good tips on making sure that your pH balance stays straight and also on hygiene products used down there. So my biggest thing is sensitive products like 
full blown. Don't do anything scented. If you do do something scented, do something very light and scented. Like for example, use an unscented bar of Dove soap and water. That's literally it. That is literally it. I'm telling you guys. You do not need anything major. Because when you put a bunch of chemicals down there and a bunch of scented things, it literally will throw your pH balance off, like I said. Um, if you have anything and your pH balance is thrown off, antibiotics are really good. So maybe like drinking yogurt, drinking yogurt, eating yogurt, drinking cranberry juice, drinking water. What you put into your body definitely reflects in your hygiene and how much you sweat. Well, maybe not how much you sweat, but you know, like when you sweat, like how strong the body odor is, your pH balance. All those things are reflected based off of what you put in your body. So please make sure that you're drinking water. Make sure that you're doing all those things because it definitely will reflect. Like I say, antibiotics are really good. So whether you're taking that in a vitamin form, whether you're um, eating yogurt, things of that nature. You guys have probably heard this before. Pineapples are also really good for maintaining your pH balance simply because of the acidity within the fruit. It helps because like I said, it's a self-cleaning organ. Now, when you do clean your intimate areas... I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to intensify this to the highest extent. Do not put anything on the inside. Okay, I know some people are very big on like, I need soap, I need soap, I need soap, which I totally understand because that's how I am. Take unscented Dove soap or an unscented bar soap. I recommend Dove and lather it up and just clean the outside. That's it. And only water on the inside because if you put, like I said, product on the inside, it's a self cleaning organ, it's going to throw it off. If there is any intense smell or crazy smell or anything crazy, go talk to a doctor, go do your own research, but do not go stick a bar of soap up there because it's not going to work. For one, it's gonna hurt, and two, it's just not gonna work, it's really gonna throw it off. And I think people do not tell girls that enough or they don't explain it when they're just like just use soap they don't tell you don't put it inside so that's why i'm here i'm helping y'all don't worry so make sure that it's only on the outside and to some people this is like duh but if you didn't know this don't feel bad it's fine everybody you don't come out the womb knowing everything so it's okay it's totally fine okay next question is what do you recommend for exfoliation so i recommend tea tree products tea tree tea hut products i think it's called tea hut i'm gonna put a picture right here it was also in the beginning of the video for all the products that I used. I really recommend those body scrubs because for one, not only do they smell good, they actually work and I don't feel like they're too harsh on my skin. Everybody's skin type is different. So if you feel like that's too harsh for you, um, exfoliation gloves are really good. I really like those. I've used exfoliation gloves before in their chef's kiss. But I can definitely say Tree Hut exfoliation sugar scrubs and exfoliation gloves are really great products because like i said not only does it keep your skin soft if you do shave when your um when your hair is growing back the follicles will get trapped under the dry skin and it will cause razor bumps that everybody does not want so that's why it's so important to exfoliate the next question is what do you recommend for moisturizing okay so for me, a lot of people when they think moisturizing, they think lotions and oils and balms and all this other stuff, which is totally true, which is so important to do after you shower. But I think people also sort of realize that there are moisturizing soaps that you can also use within the shower. So I'm a big advocate for Dove. Everybody knows I love Dove products. If you read Dove bottles, they will have a word on them. Sometimes they'll say refreshing. Sometimes they'll say restoring. And then there are ones that say moisturizing. So like, for example, there's one Dove bottle and I think it's like shea butter and vanilla or something, but I know it has shea butter on it. And written in brown, it says moisturizing. So ensuring that you're using moisturizing soaps is so important because when you're in a hot shower and you're putting a bunch of soaps on your body and doing all this and doing all that, especially if you wash with an antibacterial soap like I do, you're stripping the oils from your body. So it's important to restore that with a moisturizing soap while in the shower. So moisturizing soaps are really important. But outside of the shower, I definitely, 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 definitely recommend heavy lotions. If you don't like heavy lotions, I recommend getting a body gel or a body oil to go with it. But things that have shea butter in it, coconut oil coconut oil but yeah things just of that nature you know that are very moisturizing and good for your skin things with vitamin e in it also are really good um if you're bound to have dry skin i definitely recommend coconut oil and i believe it's vitamin e i believe vitamin e is good for the skin i'm gonna look it up just to make sure that 
is right. Hold on. Because I don't want to tell y'all the wrong thing. My nails clacking. Okay, yes. Vitamin E has been considered, and this is from Google, because y'all know y'all love sources. Vitamin E has been considered an anti-inflammatory agent in skin. So that's really, I really recommend vitamin E, whether that's in a supplement you're taking, if it says that on a soap bottle or a lotion, it's really good for moisturizing, and I definitely recommend it. So the next thing that you guys that I want to talk about is sunscreen because a lot of people don't really think about sunscreen. They think like sunscreen only when they're going to the pool or when they're going out to the beach. But sunscreen is so important on a daily basis, especially if you do your makeup. Sometimes I use sunscreen as a primer, but I just wanted to throw that in there because having a moisturizer, especially if you're constantly outside and you're out, I recommend getting a moisturizer that has SPF in it. Please do your research on what level of SPF you want because I'm not going to tell you what level to get. Everybody's different. And personally, I don't feel like I'm educated enough in SPF levels and different skin types to tell you. So please do your research on that. But I definitely recommend getting moisturizers with sunscreens in them because they definitely, definitely, definitely make a difference. And since I've been getting into skincare and focusing on my skin more and clearing my skin up and I started using sunscreens, I've definitely seen a big, 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 big difference. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about, I have a list right here that I'm looking at y'all. I'm just kind of scrolling through it. But the next thing I want to talk about is how do you get um, perfumes to last longer? So me personally, what I like to do is I love layering. I love layering. I love layering. So pretty much there are multiple ways you can do this. Um, for example, say you have like a soap that is vanilla and you have a body scrub that's vanilla scented and then you throw on like a cocoa butter lotion and you throw on a vanilla um, scented perfume. Because you've already used all those vanilla scents, all is going to be accumulated and it's going to last you a very long time. So I recommend that. You can get some very strong perfumes. Focus on strong perfumes or stronger soaps because those last longer. But if you tend to get headaches a lot... And you do like washing with calm soaps. If you put Vaseline, like say you put Vaseline on your wrist or you put Vaseline like on your collarbone and you spray your perfumes in those places, the perfume, I don't know why, I don't know the science behind it, but it sticks. It stays longer and it actually doesn't like wear off. So I recommend doing that. Also, be intentional with your perfume sprays. I've noticed that also like when I just spray anywhere, it doesn't seem to last as long versus when I actually put it like behind my ear or on my neck or on my wrist, like wherever I put it. So be intentional with your space. Also, that helps. That's pretty much it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, my loves, be safe, stay blessed, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.